You guys know what we're looking at today. The two box drum at three, the underground champion, the uncrowned king, right? <laughs> it's what everyone says. It's got all this hype. Today, we're going to look into it. And I'm going to give you my thoughts, my first impressions on this module. Okay, so really quickly, I just want to put out there, when I talk about sounds in this video, I'm only going to be talking about what comes on board in the module, you know, like what comes in the box at your front door kind of thing. So that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I noticed when I'm hooking this module up is a super convenient label panel thing at the top of the module. Um, you know, I'm just hooking my module up once, but if you guys are gigging, this is like a lifesaver here. I mean, I, I wish every module that had multiple inputs had this. Um, the other thing is the master faders. Um, e although it doesn't have, you know, actual physical faders in the menu, um, you actually have like a master fader thing where you can set the overall levels in the module for different categories, you know, toms and snare and whatever. So that is nice. Um, I also liked the hi-hat setup, and this is kind of... Um, I, I don't know if it's controversial about the two box that the hi-hats are, you know, not compatible or notoriously hard to set up, but you know, once you read the manual and you have to read the manual, that's like the one thing, but once you do, it's pretty quick. You have the hi-hat open, you save it open, you close it with your foot and you save it and you're pretty much done. You can tweak from there a little bit, but you're probably going to be good there. Um, the last pro is pad compatibility. Any pad or trigger, anything you guys have is going to work with this module. There's a bunch of presets for Yamaha, Alesis, and Roland, and, you know, of course, some others, and two box and things like that. So, guys, no worries. If you get this module, it's going to work with the triggers that you have. So, moving on to the cons, the first thing that I notice is the limited editing capabilities. And what I mean by that is you only can adjust EQ, panning, tuning, and volume which is very basic, you know, it's nice to have something there, but where you might run into an issue is when you're making your favorite custom kit or putting something together, sometimes in the samples there's ambience that, that are built into each sample that you can't take away. And it just kind of results in, you know, a mismatched drum set, like, you know, you got a drum that's in a whole nother room. Um, the other thing is the screen. Like this is the screen from the calculator your friend would hand you in the 90s and be like, bro, hold it upside down, read it. And you're like, A, O, O, 8, I, he, he says boobies, bro. And you're like, oh, ha, ha, ha. like it's that bad. <laughs> but um, pretty much, yeah, it's just so low resolution that it just makes it really hard to work with. And it's not just because it's small. The Roland TD-17 screen, is actually even smaller but because of that lower resolution you're forced to look at a whole bunch of abbreviations that because the words won't fit on the screen and on top of that you're learning a new terminology in this module like you know settings menu isn't called settings it's called unit you know and sensitivity is gain things like that you have to learn this module and that brings me to my last con which is you must read the manual like um, it's it's to the point where you know, I wouldn't recommend just going in and trying to figure out everything. You you should, like, page by page, go through that manual and, and, you know, do that every time you're trying to set anything up or make a kit. Just be in the manual, you know, um, because if you don't, you're going to start messing up stuff probably. And, you know, because you're going to take a guess on what something means, but you, you'll actually just be changing a setting and you'll forget how to get there kind of thing. So <laughs> moving on. Really quickly, I want to talk about the performance of the module and as far as like how it picks up triggers and sensitivity and things like that. And I, I think it's really good. I don't know if it's great though, because I've had some mixed results. Sometimes it plays really smooth and sometimes I almost feel like it's clunky. Like maybe there's a latency issue going on. Maybe it's per pad, there's more latency or per samples or something like that. But um, overall, it's pretty good. The best thing I think as far as performance is concerned is that there is no machine gunning in this module. You guys are not going to have to worry about sounding like some cheap electronic drum set that everyone hates. It's going to sound great on a recording or through a PA. It's going to sound super natural. 
um, as long as, you know, everything is dialed in right, of course. And the last thing is when you go to choke a cymbal, it responds really quickly. It feels nice and natural to play. And with that, I want to jam through some of the sounds in the module so you can kind of get an idea of, you know, what's on board and then we'll talk about them after. All right, guys, the sounds, right? You know, in my opinion, this is the best part about this module. I am I was so surprised by how many good sounds there are just built right in. You know, I'm just pulling a number out of a hat, but, you know, 80% of the sounds, I think, are just super usable, and they're fantastic as far as, you know, the acoustic drum sounds go. You know, electric ones are like, you know, they are what they are. They're electric, right? But um, as far as the crashes... You know, almost all of them are just, you know, they're great. They're highly usable. They have great sustain. They respond really dynamic. Um, the toms in particular sound super natural, whether that's the jazz ones or the deeper ones. Um, they're really dynamic and punchy, and you can find something that you like. And I guess if I was going to give any kind of critique, I think some of the hi-hats aren't the greatest, but they're still usable, and some of the snares might be a little bit dry for my liking. But the thing is, there's still good sounding snares, you know, like, and there is ambient ones too with, you know, more snare buzz and stuff that I do like. But the point is, when you're flipping through sounds, you're not passing them up because they sound bad. They're just not what you're looking for. And that is just, I mean, that's just refreshing to go through and find sounds in a module that way. All right, so if I had to sum this module up into one word, I think that would be potential. You know, the fact that I haven't even talked about the biggest feature, uh, which is, you know, that you can import multi-layer samples from your favorite VST. And I still think it's a great buy for $8.99. Um, I think it says a lot for the module. The onboard sounds are competitive with anything else in the same price range, in my opinion. Um, you know, but there is the asterisk of, you know, having to get around those menus and learning this module and all the new 
terminology and stuff like that, you know, and for some people that can be a deal breaker. So you just might want to think about that. Once you learn it, though, it's, you know, it's mainly two menus. You go through two menus and it's not that hard to get around. It's just, uh, you know, a little bit unsightly to look at. <laughs> so I hope you guys got some good information out of this. And uh, thanks for checking out my video and I'll see you guys soon.